In this episode of Ask a Firefighter, we're talking about firefighter age limits, women in the fire service, how to quit your firefighting job, and a whole bunch more. Let's get right into it. So before we get right into it, two quick things. Number one, I apologize. I have to, I owe all of you an apology. I have been terrible about answering your comments. And so what I wanna do going forward is if you have a question and you would like me to address it on these Ask a Firefighter videos or segments, whatever you wanna call them, just put in your comment with your question uh, something that lets me know you want to address it and ask a firefighter. Just put hashtag uh, ask a firefighter or say, can you address this in the next ask a firefighter segment? And I will be happy. I actually really enjoy doing these uh, ask a firefighter segments. It's kind of cool. It's like it's almost like we're sitting across the table from each other or something and you're asking me questions. I could tell you as a friend, hey, this is how I would approach this or this is what I would do. So that's number one. Number two, I want to say thank you again to all of you for all the support you have given. Uh, to this channel and all the really kind words. Uh, I love the fact that this channel has been helping a lot of you and so thank you for all of your kind words and your feedback. Uh, it's the internet so there's always people that don't like it but that's okay. The, the, the support from you guys has been overwhelming so I wanted to say thank you to each and every one of you that have done that. So that said, let's get right into the questions and the first one comes from Mitchell Medlin and he says, how do I quit my current job at a department to go to work at another department uh, carefully? So I actually did this. Uh, my first department that I got hired at, uh, I was there for three weeks and then my current department offered me a job. So I left and came to where I work now. And I, that can be a really anxiety inducing experience. Um, you're not really sure what to do. Uh, being a firefighter is a little different than your standard job. People get real clickish. Um, so it's a little nerve wracking. So my recommendation to you would be this. First things first, don't tell anybody. I don't care if it's your best friend on the department or whoever it is, uh, firefighters talk. And if you tell one person, I promise you within an hour, three more people are gonna know and by the end of the day, everybody's gonna know. So keep it to yourself. The second thing I would say is be as professional as you possibly can. Meaning, you're gonna wanna write an actual resignation letter and submit it to the chief or whoever the, the person is that, that handles that type of stuff. Uh, actually sit down with your senior officer or your chief, obviously that depends on the size of the department, and sit down and explain to them what's going on. Hey, I just wanted to let you know that I've accepted another position at another department. Um, yeah, and, and, and just be as professional as you can, as courteous as you can, as grateful as you can. Now, what I will say is most people, when that happens, will be totally understanding and say, hey, great, good luck, best of luck to you. You are going to run into somebody probably that is going to be, uh, has this attitude that, that you owe the department something. And that is a terrible attitude. Don't let anybody tell you that a decision that you're making for yourself or your family because the department pays more or it's a better fit or whatever your reason is, um, that's for you to decide. This is your job. This is your life. Don't let somebody in the department try and guilt you into staying somewhere where you're not happy or you, you, you have more opportunities somewhere else. You do what's best for you. So that's how I would handle Again, I get it. It's a very awkward, tough situation, um, but most people are going to be professional and courteous in response as long as you're professional and courteous to them. Just make sure you don't burn any bridges. Uh, next quest set of questions is from Grant Walter. Uh, first one is, hey, could you make a video on how receiving and directing calls work between different departments, duty crews, etc.? I'm not really sure what you mean by that. If you want to clarify that question, I, I think you're asking me how do 911 calls come in and how are they processed and who's sent where. Uh, but before I go into that, I can make a whole video on that if you want. Uh, just clarify the question for me if you see this. Uh, next one is how a city firefighter gets a wildland commission. So. It's a really good question. And to be totally honest, uh, I live in an area where we don't really have wildland firefighters, but I do have family members and uh, some friends that are firefighters out on the West Coast that have worked in wildland crews and been in charge of wildland crews. And what I'm trying to do is set up uh, essentially like an interview and a Q&A with uh, senior wildland firefighters that have run crews to go over everything you need to know about wildland firefighting, what to expect, what it's like, what the selection process is, what the pay, you know, all of that kind of stuff. Um, and so that I can get somebody on this channel that is a true expert in wildland firefighting and that we can just go back and forth and I can find out everything I can for you guys. So I will be getting to that. Um, but yeah, so know that's coming as well. 
Next question from Grant was, how many departments at a time can someone work for? Uh, full-time one. Most full-time departments will only allow you to work at one. The reason being, uh, well, there's probably several reasons, but I know one main reason is if it's a union department, the union feels that, it, that if that if you are a union firefighter in one city in one department and you do that as well as another city in another department, they feel as though you're stealing that job from somebody else. Uh, whether you agree with that or not, I don't know. Uh, but honestly, you probably aren't going to want to work two full-time uh, firefighter jobs. That's probably 100 hours a week. You're mandated to be on, on firefighting duty, which is which is fine if that's what you want to do, but you're going to get burned out pretty quick. However, you can work at a part-time department. You can work at a volunteer department. Uh, some departments will have rules and regulations about that. Some diehard union guys will say that, you know, you're you're stealing jobs or you're not allowed to do that. That's nonsense. It's it's your life and it's it's you know you make money how how you need to do that. And so if you're going to be volunteering maybe in the department or in the area or the city that you grew up in because you want to give back to your city, that's a good thing. Uh, so full-time departments one. Other departments you can work for multiple. Um, how do firefighters earn a degree of some kind while on duty? Is it mostly online? You earn a degree while you're on duty by you know, while you're on duty. Yeah, it would have to be online. You obviously can't go to class unless you can take time off to go to class. At the time of making this, um, I'm actually in law school, and you just balance it. Uh, you take time off. You trade time with guys or girls that you work with. Um, you figure it out. You get into class and you do it as much as you can. And when you have some downtime, you get your studying in. I work with another guy who went to PA school. He's a physician's assistant. Um, and I think that's a two and a half year program. And uh, he just made it work uh, between trading time with guys and, and taking time off and whatnot. You just, you just get in there. It's a grind. You do it. Fortunately, like you said, a lot of places have online degrees. You certainly can do those online if you have downtime at the department. Um, but yeah, that's how people get their higher education or advance their education. Uh, when I and then your last question from Grant is when I get my commission from the fire academy, are my only options for expanding education paramedic and fire sciences? No, not at all. Uh, your 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 options for expanding your education is really infinite. I mean, you can go to you can go to hazmat school, you can go to tech rescue school, you can go to SWAT school. Um, you can, you can become a fire inspector. You can become an arson investigator. Uh, if you want to stay in the fire world, uh, you can do what the guy I work with did. Go to PA school, go to nursing school, do what I'm doing, go to law school. You know, you can go do whatever you really want to do as far as expanding your education. You are not locked in or tied into uh, paramedic and fire science. Become an EMS instructor, become a fire instructor. Uh, the, the options are really limitless. There's a tons of programs out there, both online and in person that you can choose from. And so I would encourage you, if, you know, obviously get your training in, uh, know what you need to know, become proficient at your job for where you are, and then start expanding your education in something that, that you're interested in. Uh, next question is from uh, Mun, M-O-N. Uh, question is, how extensive is the background check? Is it similar to the military where they call and interview family members? If so, do I need to give my family a heads up about being contacted? Really good question. It all depends on the department, though. Some departments do barely any of a background check. Others do very extensive background checks. I even heard of a department once that wanted to come to a person's house and go through their house and see their bedroom. Personally, if I applied to a department and they wanted to come go through my house, I would tell them, no, we're not. We're, I'm done. I mean, this is not the NSA. This is not a top secret job. Um, that, to me, that's ridiculously invasive and overkill. However, a lot of places with background checks will, um, you'll fill out a bunch of paperwork. You might have to go get, you know, the FBI background check where they take your, your thumbprint and your fingerprint and they run it. See if you have any criminal records, see what kind of driving record you have, just basic stuff. Some places will require you to do a polygraph or a CVSA as well. Uh, I have videos on that on this channel as well if you want to check those out and know what to expect. And I'm probably going to be updating that polygraph video here shortly too. So um, yeah, so it all depends on the department. And get really extensive with a polygraph or it could just be a couple questions that you'll hear about in your interview and all the background check just kind of have this in the background however if you do put people down as references i would give them a heads up and say hey i used you as a reference at xyz department and they might be calling you some departments will call and actually interview all of your family members or friends or whoever your references are uh, others will not 
just depends. But it's definitely good at practice, good thinking uh, to give them a heads up. Good question. Uh, Stephen Lombardi asked me, how much of a disadvantage are you in for trying to get hired when you're not a military veteran? Seems very difficult to get in without being a vet, especially here in the Northeast. Uh, I don't think you are at a disadvantage. Um, having military experience is a positive for getting into the fire service, but I wouldn't say that if you don't have it, you're not disadvantaged. I'm not in the, I was never in the military. Um, I'd say probably 75% of the people that I work with 60% of the people that I work with have never been in the military. Um, most firefighters that I know were not in the military. Um, now, some departments and cities will give uh, veterans bonus points on the test. If you're unfamiliar with how this works, the very first step in a hiring process for a lot of departments is that you will sit down and have to take a civil service test or some form of a written test. And what they'll do is they will offer bonus points to people with certain backgrounds. For example, you might get bonus points if you have a college degree. You might get bonus points if you're a veteran. Um, and a lot of people think that that's unfair. And maybe it is, maybe it isn't. I don't know. Um, but uh, yeah, I would not say that you're at a disadvantage. And to this point, Stephen, I'm not saying that you're saying this directly. But a lot of people, I've, I've gotten comments that, that have people have said, I'm not a firefighter because... Um, I'm not a veteran and I didn't get bonus points. No, you're not a firefighter because you didn't do well enough. Um, that sort of mentality and, and that sort of, I call it a victim mentality. I think a lot of people call it a victim mentality of, well, if it wasn't for this, then I would, then I would be that. Get rid of that line of thinking. Um, it's only going to hurt you in the fire service. And quite honestly, it's only going to hurt you in life. Uh, so move beyond that. Uh, if you want to do well, you need to do the best that you possibly can. And you know what? Somebody might do better than you. And you know what, you might go through the entire hiring process and you might be the best candidate, but they hire somebody else because they're looking for somebody specific or, hey, you know what, it just might be unfair. It has happened to me a bunch of times. It, it, it sucks. Trust me. I know. I get it. It's happened to me many times, um, but that's life. And you move on to the next one. So that's the best advice I can give you. I don't think you're at a disadvantage at all. Uh, Emb Ivy, E-M-B Ivy says, what are some tips you'd give women going into the fire service? Very good question, Emb Ivy. Whew, this one's tough. Uh, so I think on the end, I can see on the back end of YouTube what how many people that watch this channel are men versus women. I think it's like 92% men. So um, for the women that watch this, my advice to you would be pretty simple, which is whether you think it's right or not, or fair or unfair, you are going to have to perform very well. Um, Anybody that's been around the fire service knows that there are uh, a lot of people with big egos in the fire service, and a lot of men don't like being shown up, particularly physically, um, by women. However, like I said, you are not just going to have to meet the standards, you're probably going to have to exceed the standards. That's probably not, that's probably unfair. Well, it's definitely unfair. Um, I think that if, if, if there's a certain standard, everybody should be held to that standard and that's it. Um, but just know that it's probably going to be a little bit more difficult for you. But what I would say is that don't let that discourage you. Some of the, the first department I got hired at, my first lieutenant ever was a female and, and she was an ass kicker. I mean, she was really cool. I liked her a lot. Um, some of the best paramedics I've ever met and I've ever worked with are women. So don't let that dissuade you. Um, but you are going to have to, uh, in a sense, prove yourself. And it's ironic because usually the most physically incapable men are the ones that like to degrade women and talk about how they shouldn't be firefighters when really they're the ones that can't even keep up with the women. So don't let that discourage you. Just do the best that you can. And I promise you it's going to work out. You're going to be fine. Um, well, I shouldn't say that. I promise you that it's going to work out. But uh, do the best that you can. You're going to do well. Keep working and you'll get there. Uh, next question from Kate Stagg. Are there age limits for firefighters? I'm almost 46. How can I find out if my state has age limits? Again, depends on where you work. Uh, age limits, some departments have them, some departments don't. Most part-time and volunteer departments don't have age limits. But if you're talking full-time, depending on where you work, depending on where you live, depending on the departments, uh, they may have an age limit. Usually, I've seen age limits anywhere from 34 to 40 is where it is. Um, but again, 
If you want to find out, what I would recommend you do is call your your state fire marshal and or call that call that office and um, or whoever the public safety office for your state and ask around and find out. They'll know if there's a statewide limit. Um, and if they don't know, or call specifically the department that you're interested in, in working for or applying to and see if they have some sort of limit. Uh, there's a lot of reasons for why they have age limits, um, but some of them aren't necessarily just because you're too old, but a lot of them, if, 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 if you are a certain age when you get hired, they want to make sure that, especially if it's a pension job, that you can pay in long enough to make it worth it. And I don't, I don't know. It just depends. Uh, just I, I would check with the state and then check with whatever department you're interested in. Uh, Mr. T. Kissinger asks, question, and I mean this in the most humble way possible, I'm just anxious for my interview. If I have a four-year degree and play Division One baseball as well as 911 dispatch experience, will that raise my stock in the eyes of the guys interviewing me? Maybe. Um, 911 dispatch experience is important. Uh, dispatching is a very hard job and they are very underrated. So if you're a dispatcher and this, if you're a dispatcher and you're watching this, thank you. Um, but uh, Division One baseball, does that help you? Probably not. I mean, that doesn't make you a better firefighter necessarily. But what it does say about you is that you are willing to put in the time and the effort to pursue one thing and become very good at it, right? It, it helps you in the sense of they know that you know how to fit into a team. They know that you know how to uh, work in a group. They know that you know how to focus on one thing and be very good at it, which helps you just kind of overall as a candidate, but does it help you as a firefighter? No, not necessarily. Um, but if you're using this in your interview, I would play up your ability to work in a team and be a part of a group and work towards a goal. That's, that's a large part of what firefighting is. So um, yes, it helps you and no, it doesn't. I hope that, I hope that kind of cleared up what I meant. Uh, next question is from, uh, bunch of letters and oh sh shadow of death I think is what this is, says it's a bunch of letters and numbers uh, says this might be a stupid question but would it be okay for me to bring a professional notepad with some notes and questions on it for my use during the interview um, it's not a dumb question and yeah I guess if you want to I don't really see interviews don't usually drag on that long and they try to make them as conversational as possible uh, so it'd be tough to just, it's really awkward in a conversation if you're saying, stop, hold on, let me take notes real quick on what you just said. Uh, you can. I actually have a video about what you can bring to a firefighter interview, and I'll put it somewhere up here. Um, but usually what I recommend is people make what I call a personal, por personal portfolio. And what that is, is I recommend bring maybe three or four copies of your resume, but then each of these little packets, so you're gonna have your resume and then two letters of recommendation, at least one, preferably two, no more than three. Letters of recommendation from people that aren't family members, right? These are, these are coworkers, bosses, teachers, things like that. Um, and then you put them in one of those little clear binding things and you make three or four of those. And then you get one of these, uh, uh, I usually have it in my office. It's 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 like a leather. It's called a pad folio. It's it's a leather bound. It's they come in black and brown, and it's just a folder. Put your personal portfolios in there. Close it up, and that's what you bring with you. And there's a little pen in there. And usually it has a little notepad in there. So if that's what you need, that's what I would recommend you use. I would not recommend walking in with you know like a legal pad and a pen. That I mean, you can if you want, I guess, but you don't. You're not going to really need it. So. That's what I would recommend you bring with you, but if you feel like you need to take notes, so be it. Uh, and then last question was, hey Mike, is from Steve. It says, hey Mike, I've been applying to police and fire for the last year. What made you decide fire? Thanks for all your help with the videos. Uh, what made me decide fire is when I, I used to play soccer and I played in the pros for a very short time. And that's what I always wanted to do growing up. And when I finished playing soccer, I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do going forward. And the closest thing that I could think of that was a team environment that was in the real world, like a real world job, uh, was firefighting. And so that's kind of what drew me to it. Um, a friend of mine, uh, at the time, he was living down in Atlanta and he was working in one of the ERs down there. And he said, hey, the Atlanta fire guys come in here and out, in and out all the time. They're, they're pretty cool. Why don't you give that a shot? And that's really how I kind of got started. It seemed like a good uh, team environment type of thing to get involved in and a friend of mine said that the Atlanta firefighters seem like pretty cool people so 
why don't you try that? And that's really, I mean, that's not an exciting, crazy story. It's not a very cool story, but that's what made me choose it over police. I, if you've watched this channel at all, I've talked about how I have applied to police or I applied to police for a long time and I got turned down uh, regularly and it didn't pan out. And I'm really glad I made the decision that I did with fire. And that's what did it for me. The team environment and um, I'll tell you what else, the schedule is pretty awesome. I mean, there's definitely some downsides to the schedule. For example, last night, I think I maybe slept two hours. Um, but the schedule's tough to beat. So those are my reasons for choosing fire over police and given the opportunity again, if I could rewind and had to choose again, I would definitely choose fire again. So as always guys, I hope you found that useful and that helpful. Again, uh, if you have any questions, put something like ask a firefighter in the comment with your question and I'll be sure that I get it. Again, I apologize that I've been bad at getting back on the comments. Um, but uh, as always, hope you found this useful and helpful. Give this video a like and a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already, and I will see you guys in the next video.